I'm Colby Melton, an SDI student enrolled in the FTH 202 Revolvers course. Today's date is April 13th, 2024. My professor is Dr. D and this is my module four assignment. Here in the vise on my workbench, I have my, uh, my Taurus uh, 856. As you can see, uh, the revolver is clear. I will now take a um, trigger pull, um, gauge the trigger pull once in double action and uh, once in single action. Here in double action, we have it at a uh, 11.75. The single action and then the single action trigger pull, we have it just under, under six. Pause. Here, uh, on my notebook, we've taken, I've taken two other uh, double action uh, pull measurements and uh, two other single action pull measurements. We'll add the ones that we just got, 11.75 and uh, 6.0. We'll round that up to 6.0. So we have an average of six pounds for the um, single action and 11.75 for the uh, double action. To, so to sum up uh, part one of the assignment, I have a baseline trigger pull of 11.75 pounds for the double action and six pounds for the uh, single action. All right, for part two, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble the revolver off video and then I'm going to apply some uh, layout fluid uh, to the working surfaces of the frame, uh, the side plate, uh, the cylinder stop, the hand, the hammer, and the double action sear. Um, I'll come back and uh, show that uh, once I have the uh, layout fluid applied. As you can see, the revolver has been stripped, disassembled, and uh, we have the uh, layout fluid here. Uh, we've gone ahead and placed it on uh, the inside of the frame, the blue surfaces in there, all the working surfaces, uh, especially where the hammer runs, trigger runs, that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the side plate, the inside of the side plate, the cylinder stop, uh, the hand, the hammer, and the double action sear right there, and the uh, along the trigger. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Put it back together, work the action several, several times, take it back apart, and look for the shiny uh, high spots. And here we have the revolver back together. It's passed a functions check. I'm going to work it several times off video uh, through multiple um, cycles of operation, and then take it off back apart and look for the high spots. Okay, we have the uh, revolver taken back apart. Uh, looking at the high spots, so we have one right here in the hand uh right here along the frame or the uh, side plate a little bit where the hammer runs right there in the uh, frame and a little bit on the edges of the uh, hammer and just on the edges of the uh, trigger and right there uh the trigger uh, sear uh, you can't really tell there but it has like a two place high spot line that looks like it probably just needs to be uh, polished to make it more even I will go ahead and polish all those and blue them and oil it. Uh, I've shined up the, or polished up the, some of the surfaces um, that had high spots. Uh, we got everything nice and even um, to wear out the high spots. And now we're going to do some cold bluing and oiling. And then uh, we'll get it back together tomorrow after uh, the cold bluing is, has uh, cured overnight. All right, the double action trigger pull. Right at 11 and a half. Single action trigger pull. A 
about five and seven, uh, five and three quarters. Okay, I've took, uh, taken three trigger pulls of both, and uh, the results are about 11 and a half on the double action uh, each time. So it's about an average of 11 and a half pounds, and five and uh, three quarters for the single action. So this is about a um, quarter of a pound uh, better. Uh, we're, we were at 11 and a quarter, uh, three quarters. Now we're 11 and a half and we were at six and now we're at uh, five and a quarter, uh, five and three quarters. So uh, this is an improvement. Um, I don't know if you can really feel it. Uh, it's been a while since I've done it. Uh, before the uh, polishing, so it's kind of hard to tell. Okay, all the polished spots uh, were re-blued, everything oiled, and the uh, revolvers back together. Um, trigger pulse feels pretty smooth. I don't know that it's any lighter or, than, or heavier than before. Uh, I've already worked it a couple of times before I started the recording. Um, Single action feels pretty good. Uh, nothing seems to be binding or anything. Okay, the revolver's back on the workbench. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video, and uh, this is part three. I'm gonna disassemble, uh, install the uh, improved springs, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, here we have the old springs beside the new springs. We're gonna go ahead and change them out. I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, the springs are changed out. We're gonna put it back together. New springs are installed. We're gonna put the side plate back on and then go uh, test it, uh, functions check, and then uh, trigger pull. All right, we're back on the workbench. Uh, we disassembled it, reassembled it with the uh, new springs in it. We did the functions check. I've already taken two uh, trigger pulls uh, with the double action and two trigger pull pulls for the single action. We're going to do one on video. Double action is right at 8.5. And the single action is right at 4. All right, here we go. We had eight, uh, three eight point fives for an average of eight point five pounds, and three four pounds for an average of four pounds. And as you can see, we went all the way from eleven uh, and three quarters and six uh, pounds down to. 11 and a half pounds and five and three quarters and now we're down to eight and a half and four that's a significant improvement all right part four of this assignment we're going to do the headspace uh you can remove the plates for this if you need to uh it's not necessary with this revolver uh we're going to go ahead and lock it in the flame uh, to the thing this is the uh, go gauge pull back on the trigger slightly and go all the way around as you see, it moves through the gauge, no problem. We'll move to the uh, next one. And uh, we'll do all um, six the same way. And then we'll move to our, our no-go. I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, head spacing the go gauge, and then I'll come back for the no-go gauge. All right, that completes uh, my go. I'm gonna go ahead and change out to the no-go gauge here. And uh, we will be able to move it through the bottom of the frame and it'll get stuck on the other side. And um, so without further ado. And it gets stuck right there. Open it up. Go to the next one. And I'm going to pause the camera and... Uh, do the other five chambers. Make sure that none of them actually go through the frame. Okay, and that completes all six chambers uh, with the no-go. None of them went through the, uh, the back side of the frame past this point right here. 